So all your nail tips are glued on. By rights, if you have a normal square nail or a usual way of taking the nail down, you can just get a tip cutter, which I will show you an example of next, and you just push it on the nail and clip. What I'm going to do is show you some different nail shapes that you can do and just a few different ways that you can pre-cut your tips to make your life a little bit easier by the time you put the acrylic on. Now notice the grip that I'm holding. See, I'm just rotating my wrist and rotating it round in a circle. This is a start of just learning how to grip your hand file. It feels really funny at first. You're gonna feel like, what am I doing? Um, but it will get more familiar over time. When I'm going down the right side of the nail, notice how I'm gripping it almost like a pencil grip or like a gun point, I guess you could say. I'm just kind of rotating around the side. Now, when you're doing tips, you don't have to be this pedantic, but I'm just trying to get you into good habits for the rest of the nail. By now you would have seen a few different ways that you can hold the nail file. So just try and get familiar with it. Now with the tips, we really just want to make the end of the tip completely matte. We don't want to over file it. We're just going through, doing a real quick file until it's enough to be perfect. And then we're just Going, see where I'm pointing my finger? We just need to file just before the natural nail on that line to kind of take that tip line and the glue down and just so that it seamlessly flows into the nail. Also paying special attention to the side ears. That's why it does help to take off the little corners before you put the tip onto the nail. And so you're just coming through and really taking that bulk down and I'm really pay attention to filing before the natural nail. Because once you felt like the actual line has started to file down, now if you just get like one of your fingernails and kind of scratch along where that tip is, if you can feel a really big line or a divot it's getting caught, that means you still need to probably blend it more because you don't want surface breakdown, you don't want bacteria or anything like that harboring under there and it's not blended correctly and it's also going to create air bubbles and things like that which is not going to have the perfect adhesion when you overlay acrylic. So once you feel like you've got that line down and it's blended a little bit better and that's why you really start to blend on the actual line where the tip meets the nail, then you can just gently give it a light little buff forward over the natural nail and blend and stop. Remember we've already pre buffed the nail beforehand, we don't want to over the file the nail. So it's not about filing on the nail plate. Remember, think about why you're doing the steps, not just going ahead and filing for the sake of it. We are filing to blend the tip into the nail, which means we have to file on the plastic bit of the tip, just on the area, just before the actual nail starts. So what I'm doing here is just cutting the tip in the corners. And this is going to be an almond shaped nail. So we're just making life a little bit more easier coming in and just taking off those edges because we're going to file that later and we don't have to be too pedantic because once again we're just doing a rough shape we've got to file it once we have the application. Lay the file across and try and taper in that and try and taper in the tip get it to a nice point. With nail tips, it is a lot more difficult, I feel like, to try and sculpt things like an extreme stiletto, coffin. Um, that is not something that is really taught, I guess, in a basic course. That's when you start getting to intermediate. But it's a good thing to know that sculpting is something that really does take your skill levels. Um, it's a good thing to know because sculpting really will take to a whole other level, being an nail tech. So you really want the angling of the tip to start coming in pretty much after the nail, after you get to the free edge of the actual natural nail. The stiletto starts kind of tapering and coming in. A stiletto is really nice and straight on either side, not like an almond where it's all curved sides all around. So on to this next tip, we're going to do an almond shape. So once again, we're going to cut off the tips in the similar kind of area. We don't want it to look like a dinosaur claw at all. We want to really, where I'm pointing to, just soften and curve those edges around. 
For an almond shape now, once again, just visualize an almond that you're eating. We don't want any harsh lines anywhere. So what you can see here is I'm literally just coming in and softening that little harsh line that goes kind of from the middle, mid tip down to the end of the tip. You can see I've already started to blend a little bit on the right side and now I'm softening it up on the left side. Keep coming around the nail and you just start to either make it a rounded almond so you just kind of round off the edges or you can kind of take it to a point. I always like to ask my clients first of all, hey listen, do you want a round almond or a pointy almond? Do you want to slice and dice? <laughs> um, so make sure your client shows you a photo of what they want first because sledder and almond are completely different. And so is a round almond and a pointy almond. So make sure you clarify that first because you'll know about it before you start filing all 10 nails and then you get to the end of the set and you're like, oh actually, I don't want that shape. <laughs> So now we're going to focus on a coffin. So a coffin shape is very much nice, extreme, clean lines. We don't want bowed edges or soft edges. What I'm trying to do here is just cut on the left side and the right side just a little bit. And then I'm angling my file in and having a straight line so it's actually pushed against the nails you can see there so it's right against flat but also edging and angling my file in towards the tip that way then it's going to create a straight line coming from the end of the tip up the nail to create that nice angular narrow shape that we all love that coffin look for then just seal off the end and square it off So there you have it, there are four of your popular nail shapes. We have a square, a stiletto, an almond and a coffin. Now obviously they don't look perfect at this stage, they're a little bit lopsided, they're not shaped nearly as good as what we want, however remember how I said that we don't want to double up on steps because we do have to reshape the nails after the acrylic's on them. So this is just to give you a nice foundation for you to start to lay your acrylic on and then we can shape after. Just giving you a quick little demo as well as to how quick this is with an e-file. If you're feeling like it's taking quite a while blending with the hand file, don't worry, there is another way. I always like to show you two alternative options, but definitely once again, do not try this at home until you've been trained to use an e-file. So there you have it, there is one hand prepped and ready to have a nice cleanse. Let's talk about some primers next and laying our acrylics so your hard work on practicing the beads is going to pay off next. Now make sure you do not move to the next stage until you really have mastered your acrylic ratios and control.